I like to I like to name this personal relationships because we're really going to get into it. Um, but before we start, I want to introduce Martin Buber. As in the reading, he talks about the difference in I and thou, I and thou, and I and it. And so when we're approaching relationships, uh, let me do my little wonderful artistic drawing. <laughs> I know you all love the way I draw. It inspires you. It's fantastic. I know. All right. So Martin Buber. <laughs> Martin Buber talks about I, I, I and thou, and I am it. Who can tell me about I and thou and I and it? Is I and it is uh, when people see other people as objects. And I and thou is like really, really like hearing somebody and understanding them with your whole being. Yeah, and that's that's exactly what it is. But what what does with your whole being mean? I'm gonna see you with my whole. I'm gonna experience you with my whole being. What does that mean? What does that look like? Like every every part of who you are. So I feel your words in the in the back of my cranium. Like oh man. You like, you understand <laughs> where they're coming from in a in a mind-body sense, in a, their relationship with their parents, with their pastor, with uh, the earth. Okay. Okay, so you're you're completely there. Yeah. What about say? Um, well, my education teacher talked about this last semester, and he, like, said, like, you can become I and it with your subject that you're teaching, mm -hmm. like, with your students. It was just really emotional, and he was just being, doing the most, but basically he was just saying, like, <laughs> instead, <laughs> instead of, like, it being, like, you teaching the subject, you become the subject to the students, and they, yes. uh, all that stuff. All that. <laughs> all right, so, you're right. It, it can it can come across as very warm and fuzzy, and we all the world let's hold hands and sing Kumbaya, but it's, it's a very, it's a very, very amazing practice if you, if you can get it. It may be hard to get it right now where you are. Like, it's like, yeah, you're doing the most. But it's kind of like, does anybody have a favorite pair of jeans? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So when you got your favorite pair of jeans, did they fit They fit great the first time you put them on? Or was it like a favorite hat or something? Or did you have to wear it a little bit to really get them, get them right? You know what I'm talking about? All right. So this is about a weird scenario. Okay. So so I it is like, so if I just got this generic pair of jeans, and it's like, man, I don't like the way they fit around my my legs, or I don't like the way they feel around my thighs or whatever. But then as you get, but once you get a pair of jeans that you really like, you get in, this is gonna look weird. You get in them and it's like, oh man, they fit right. They just they just go with you, you know? You get up, you don't have to worry about pulling them up, or you don't have to worry about <laughs> moving in a certain direction. It just, they just go with you. And so when you're with them, you feel every, not every fabric in them, but it just, they just go with you. Does that make sense? So relationships, how many times have we been in relationships where Someone's talking to him. Go ahead and talk to me, Tom. Just, just, just start talking to me. Talk to me about how was your weekend? It totally sucked. Mm -hmm. Why it sucked? Um, because one, I had too much to do and people were calling my phone. Okay. A lot of the time to get me to do something. So I wasn't on. <laughs> I wasn't on duty this weekend. Okay. <laughs> Where? <laughs> huh? <laughs> what? Why are you laughing? Because I know what you're doing. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, so that would be I and it. All right? All right, so go ahead and tell me again about about your weekend. It sucked because people were calling me on my phone, and I didn't, you know, I wasn't on duty, so I was getting my phone blown up all the time for no reason. Okay, so your phone was just getting blown up for no reason. That's what it felt like to me. <laughs> okay, now, now that, that may seem ridiculous. But do you see the difference? What's the difference? Was I doing the most? <laughs> okay, okay. All right, well, why did I repeat what, what, why did I repeat what she said? To show that you're listening. To show that I'm listening. Now, some people might just do that, like, yeah, let me get them off of me real quick so they don't think I'm not paying attention. Because that does happen in relationships. Uh, not calling anybody out. But what I and thou says is you are... What he approaches I and thou from kind of like, and he uses thou, you know, thou is using a lot of religious settings, and it's kind of like a reverential, you really intentionally like, oh, whatever you say. Like, but you, you're putting yourself in that, in that moment where it's completely mindful, right? So in I, it, we just kind of objectify the situation or the person or the thing. 
I and thou, you are actively listening and you're putting yourself in it. So, let's take two random people. This We all come to a random conversation or our relationships. We all have stuff. Prime example, when you came into class today, you might have stuff going on in your mind. I'm thinking about this class. i got to rush off and leave this class to go to this. Somebody text, i got to text someone so they get on my nerves. Or whatever, whatever you have going on in your mind, we all come to situations with stuff. And so sometimes, and they, sometimes they call that monkey mind when you have a lot of stuff going on, which is fine. It's not good or bad. But then you have someone trying, like she was talking to me about her, about the phone call. While she's talking to me, I might be like, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm listening. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But in my mind, my mind is thinking back to my, I got to text somebody. And so I'm not, I'm not present myself with her. Boober is saying, I and thou is, I am present, presenting myself with that person. And it, it predisposes the relationship to a different level. Does that make sense? Any questions about that? Okay, so this is what I want you all to do. I want you to turn to someone next to you. Find somebody next to you, just turn to them. They won't bite. Hopefully not today. <laughs> this is what I want you to do. I want you to talk about... I'm not going to talk about you again. Okay. I want you to talk about... Before I let you go, I want, I want you to talk about what you did this past weekend. Okay? Uh, make sure you are, you just tell the person what's going on, but as you're doing that, as the first person starts talking, I want the other person to start talking, telling them about how their weekend was, what happened during their weekend. So at the same time? time. So at the same time. Oh, at the yeah. same damn time. <laughs> All right. All right, y'all ready? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. All right. All right, on the count of three, one, two. Oh, y'all already started. Three. Go ahead. <laughs> How was that? No. Awkward. It was fun. <laughs> All right. Talk to me. How was it? My hands. Awkward. Oh, yeah. Because it was like I was trying to listen to her, but then I would lose my train of thought trying to tell her how my weekend was. Yeah, oh, I couldn't think of one of them. You couldn't think at all. I couldn't forget. I think we both felt yeah. rude. Yeah. Yeah. We both felt rude to one another. You felt rude? Why did you feel rude? Because. I should be able to openly just listen to her and see how she would. She should be able to do it to me. We both are cutting each other off. Okay. What else? Talk to me. Anything else? Like, whenever me and her were talking, we, like, every time I would start talking, she would kind of stop. And then when she started again, I would stop. And we would just kind of, like, listen to each other, but yeah. still kind of interrupt yeah, each other. It just felt really yeah. weird and awkward. Okay. Mine was just overpowered hers. <laughs> you said yours just overpowered hers? Yeah, she just kind of stopped. <laughs> then we started talking about my weekend. Okay. Did, did, anybody, did anybody just try to, overpower is a good word, did anybody just start talking louder? No. No, but she was talking really low. Well. Like, I, I only thing I heard she said was late, and then I started talking about my weekend. It was really hard not to listen to her. Or maybe you were talking loud. I don't know, probably I was talking, I had a really good weekend, so probably. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's really interesting. Was it hard to concentrate on, on you all's conversation when... All this other commotion was going on with everybody else. Yes. Yeah, because I was hearing bits and pieces behind us, too, while we were talking. So I was like, wait, what? Okay, I'm trying to focus on this. So okay. It was hard to do that at the same time. It was like time. the airport. What'd you say? It was like the airport. What do you mean? There was just so much going on. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> so It was so much chatter going so on. So much, yeah. Like, just think about sitting around at the airport, like, trying to eavesdrop on people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I want so now I want to do I and thou. Now I want you all to to have a, a conversation, a dialogue, not a monologue, a conversation with someone, with you, with your person. But I want you to allow them to to speak. I want you to I want you to allow them to speak and to actually listen to what they're saying. So do not try your best not to interrupt. Allow them to speak, unless I mean socially uh, socially appropriate for you to. They ask you a question in order for you to say something, but allow them to finish their thought. Okay, so not two people speaking at once, just one person at a time. Tell us, tell us how you feel about how do you feel about Valentine's Day? All right, so obviously that was significantly different than the first time, right? Yeah. yeah. What was different about that? One? It was actually listening. You actually listened. Okay, and what did you what did you find out about? 
But her boy, he did this little thing. Her boyfriend like came down here and surprised her. Did you know he lives in Virginia? So they like went to the lake and did all that cute stuff. And then they, you know, did the whole Valentine's Day thing this weekend since he lives in Virginia. Wow. telling me how she's not really sure what she's going to do. She's going to go up to, wants to go up to Atlanta, um, have dinner and go see a movie with um, this guy. And she um, is not sure how it's, how it's going to go out. She's not really sure what she wants to do because he's kind of said, oh, whatever you want to do. And so she's still trying to kind of figure that out. Okay, short. Is he doing the most? No, he's like not doing that. Oh. You guys want to share? We okay, I wanted uh, Valentine's Day to burn. Oh, okay. You wanted to burn. Why'd you want to burn? Because one, because one of the times that I actually did have a boyfriend on Valentine's Day, I did everything, mm -hmm. and he did nothing. Okay. So I hate it, and I hate the fact that you it, it's one day thing where you you're supposed to show your love, but you're supposed to show your love every day to that person. So I I hate the whole idea of Valentine's Day. Right. Exemplify your love. <laughs> what did you learn from today? That she is going out with her boyfriend, going out to eat, and she said that she's not really one for Valentine's Day either. It's not like a big deal to her, but she mm -hmm. does enjoy it. I like to name this personal relationships because we're really going to get into it. Um, but before we start, I want to introduce Martin Buber. As in the reading, he talks about the difference in. I and thou, I and thou, and I and it. And so when we're approaching relationships, uh, let me do my little wonderful artistic draw. I know you all love the way I draw. It inspires you. It's fantastic. I and I All right, so Martin Buber. Martin Buber <laughs> talks about I, I, I and thou, and I am it. Who can tell me about I and thou and I and it? Is I and it is uh, when people see other people as objects, and I and thou is like really, really like hearing somebody and understanding them with your whole being. Yeah, and that's that's exactly what it is. But what what does with your whole being mean? I'm gonna see you with my whole. I'm gonna experience you with my whole being. What does that mean? What does that look like? Like every. Every part of who you are. So I feel your words in the in the back of my cranium, like, oh man. You, like, you understand <laughs> where they're coming from in a in a mind body sense, in a their relationship with their parents, with their pastor, with uh, the earth. Okay. Okay. So you're you're completely there. Does anybody have a favorite pair of jeans? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So when you got your favorite pair of jeans, did they fit they fit great the first time you put them on, or was it like? Or a favorite hat or something, or did you have to wear it a little bit to really get them, get them right? You know what I'm talking about? All right, so this is about a weird scenario. Okay, so so I it is like so if I just got this generic pair of jeans, and it's like man, I don't like the way they fit around my my legs, or I don't like the way they fit around my thighs, or whatever. But then as you get, but once you get a pair of jeans that you really like, you get in. This is gonna look weird. You get in them, and it's like oh man, they fit right. They just they just go with you. You know, you get up. You don't have to worry about pulling them up, or you don't have to worry about <laughs> moving in a certain direction. It just they just go with you, and so when you're with them, you feel every not every fabric in them, but it just they just go with you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like what Martin Buber is talking about, I and it. But let's apply it to relationships. How many times have we been in relationships where someone's talking to? Go ahead and talk to me, Tom. Just 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 start talking to me. Talk to me about how was your weekend? It totally sucked. Why is that? Um, because one, I had too much to do and people would call my phone okay. a lot of the time to get me to do something. So I wasn't on, I wasn't on duty this weekend. Okay. Where? <laughs> huh? What? Why are you laughing? Because I know what you're doing. Oh, oh okay. Alright, so that would be I and it. Alright? Um, I have a clip that I wanted to show with Chris Rock. Oh, um, man. And I, I, I chopped it up a little bit because the hot cross, Jesus. Um, 
This is just one about Chris Rock talking about a relationship between a man and a woman. He's talking about marriage. A woman wants the whole thing, you just watch a little bit of it. Fellas, you want your woman to be happy? All you got to say is, how was your day? How was your day? Honey, how was your day? You know why? Because how was your day is a 45 minute conversation. To you. And as a man, you don't really got to talk. You got to just act like you're talking. Like, uh huh, get out of here. Go on. I don't believe it. You know what I'm saying? Really? Get out of here. Go on. I don't believe it. You know what I'm saying? Get out of here. I told you that bitch crazy. Chris Rock was, was speaking about, uh huh. You guys like, uh huh? Yeah. And what I liked about that, there is some truth to that because when, when um, Boober and Roseburg talk about being emp empathic, they're saying empty themselves out. So basically, when we approach the other person, we put our whole person, our whole self into the conversation. Meaning, we can acknowledge the fact we got a lot of stuff going on, but actually allowing ourselves to be in the conversation. So we empty ourselves out of our own stuff and take this with balance. We put ourselves in their, we put their, ourselves in their situation. So when he was saying, we said, uh-huh, uh-huh, and obviously he was saying that just do it so do it so you don't get in trouble and do it so that you don't cause an argument. But there is some truth in that where you are you actually need to pay attention to the other person. Um, some of the things, common behaviors that prevent empathy, they gave us a good list of them in the book. Um, the first one is advising, making a statement like, I think you should, how come you didn't? So when someone is talking to you and you're telling them whatever's going on in your life, and they say something, something to the effect of, I think you should do this. How come you didn't do that? So as they're trying, to, as you're trying to explain it, this person is cutting you off, and you're like, what in the world? <laughs> and all these things, I know I've done these things a million times over. Take these things with balance. Um, in one of my other classes, they were asking, well, how, how can you actually do this? So I, do I sit there the whole time, and I'm just staring at the person and say, okay, I hear what you're saying. And you repeat it back to them, you reflect. No, I mean, that would be very socially awkward if I just stare at you. I'd be like, okay, thank you. And you'd be like, you're weird. Get away from me. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> so did you think that I was weird? Yeah. <laughs> but that's just, it's another facet of what, what behaviors might, you know, might stop empathy. All right, last but not least, correcting. Um, this, I've seen this happen with a lot of couples. Um, ironically, like around Thanksgiving table and Christmas tables. It's very funny. Um, and you all have, I'm sure that you all laughing. When the person, the mate, starts explaining the story, they're like, honey, that, that didn't happen like that. <laughs> no, you did this, this, and this. No, it was like that. No, you did this. And they start going back and forth, and then it's just all this heat and tension at the table. Nobody won't pass a cranberry sauce. <laughs> have you all been there before? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In your own families, I'm sure you've witnessed 